Today, we are talking about vasopressin. Vasopressin is the second line vasopressor. But let's do a little review of vasopressors. Remember, you have things like norepinephrine, which has alpha and beta. You have epinephrine, which has alpha and beta. You have phenylephrine, yuck, but it only has alpha. Wouldn't it be great if there was a vasopressor that had a different side of action so that it could be synergistic with these other ones? Well, that's where vasopressin comes into place. Vasopressin is special because it doesn't work on any of these receptors. It works on the V1A receptor receptor on vascular muscle, which means it works synergistically with these other vasopressors. Vasopressin is made in the posterior pituitary. When vasopressin works on the V1A receptor, it increases vascular tone. It also increases platelet activation. It also works on the V1B receptor, which works on the anterior pituitary to increase cortisol and also works on the pancreas for insulin modulation. And it also works on the V2 receptors in the kidney and acts as an anti-diuretic hormone. So it works in the collecting tubules to reabsorb water. Again, the reason why I like vasopressin is it works synergistically with other vasopressors and specifically I'm using it with norepinephrine for my patients in shock. Because it doesn't work on the same receptors, you don't get the same amount of catecholamine with the addition of vasopressin, which means you get less tachydysrhythmias. Now, several studies have looked at vasopressin compared to norepinephrine as a first line agent. And these studies have shown and some meta-analyses, there's no difference between the two of these agents when used as first line agents. There's no difference in the side effect profiles of of these two agents. And many have interpreted this to mean that it's better to use norepinephrine and vasopressin should go to the wayside. But that's not what these studies show. These studies show that the addition of vasopressin to norepinephrine is safe and it's actually beneficial. In fact, in patients who have just routine shock, you know, low dose vasopressors, using norepinephrine is just fine. But for people who are in severe septic shock, who are really, really sick, there's actually a depletion of vasopressin endogenously. And using vasopressin as a second line agent in these patients is beneficial. And just just so you don't think I'm making anything up, this is a second line agent in the surviving sepsis guideline. First is norepinephrine and then is vasopressin. So let me tell you how I go about using vasopressin. And so here's my approach for patients who are in shock. I'll always start off with norepinephrine first because it increases afterload, and that's good for my mean arterial pressure. It increases venous constriction, which remember is gonna give me an autologous amount of fluid coming back to the preload. It also increases anotropy. I'm just gonna increase my squeeze, and that's because it's a valence vasopressor. When I get my vasopressor dosing greater than 10 mics per minute, then I need to add something else. And for that, I add vasopressin. And usually I'll start that at 0.03 units per minute. Now the dosing range is anywhere from 0.01, and you'll see doses as high as 0.06 in the literature. Once you start getting to doses that are this high, you worry about coronary ischemia and mesenteric ischemia, although the data conflicts on this. So typically starting at 0.03 or 0.04 is just fine. What this does, and which is represented in many studies, is it allows you to decrease your norepinephrine dose down. So now you can spare catecholamines and have the person on a very balanced vasopressor regimen. You have alpha, you have beta, and you have vasopressin. And this last part is where it gets a little bit tricky because people always rush to get the vasopressin off so they can stay with the norepinephrine. What I try to do, on the other hand, is I bring down my norepinephrine dose until I get to a single digit, and I might actually wean off my vasopressin. I'll go by 0.01 and wean that down till off. Or I might see how the patient reacts. Some patients really like the vasopressin, in which case I'll wean off the norepinephrine. Some people need a little bit more beta. I'll keep this on. I'll wean off the vasopressin. You see, you can't apply rules to every single patient because every single patient is different. Some patients are very vasopressin deplete, and they need this vasopressin in the back. Background. So what I recommend is go slowly and listen to your patients for what they need for systemic perfusion. But at the end of the day, don't forget about vasopressin. It is a very good second line vasopressor that works in a different way than norepinephrine and it should be part of your arsenal when you're taking care of critically ill patients. I hope you enjoyed this Crit Bits. Please like, subscribe, and click that notification bell so you never miss another Crit Bits from me again. Thanks for watching.